This video will demonstrate the basic operation of the Winchester Model 1894 lever action rifle, and by implication, that of many other models or styles of rifles made in or modeled after the late 19th century. The Winchester Model 1894 is an iconic American sporting rifle. Designed by John Moses Browning, it was in continuous production for 112 years under the various incarnations of the Winchester name, and after a five-year hiatus has been returned to production by Moroku of Japan. Well over seven million have been produced, and it is probably the best-selling high-powered sporting rifle of all time. Rare variations can be highly collectible and valuable, while common versions can be found used for reasonable prices at any gun show or pawn shop in America. The operation of this rifle will be representative of several other models and brands of its type, such as previous Winchester lever action rifle models from 1866 onward, and most, possibly all, of the Marlin centerfire lever action models. Later production will often be equipped with external safeties or other cosmetic differences whose function should be obvious. These instructions should also apply to the mare's leg handgun reproductions now being offered by some manufacturers. I will not be making a disassembly video for this rifle, as Jim Green of Gunworks in Maine has already done so. Let's begin by identifying the major features and controls. The receiver. The trigger. The trigger stop. The operating lever. The hammer. The loading gate. The bolt. The ejection port. The barrel. The front sight. The traditional rear sight. Some models may be fitted with an aperture sight mounted to the receiver. This increases the sight radius and therefore theoretical accuracy. The magazine tube. Magazine capacity will vary with the cartridge being used and the length of the tube. The tube does not always go the full length of the barrel. This specimen, produced in 1977, has no external safety and is functionally identical to the originals. Consult the owner's manual for your model, which should be available for free download from the manufacturer's website. Let's see how to unload and make safe a weapon of this type. Always keeping the weapon pointed in a safe direction and your fingers away from the trigger, open the operating lever as far as it will go. This will extract and eject any cartridge which may be in the chamber. This will also cock the hammer if it is not cocked. If additional rounds are in the magazine, the next cartridge will be deposited onto the lifter. If the action is then closed, this round will be chambered and the weapon will be ready to fire again. Most operating manuals instruct the user to continue cycling the action until all live rounds have been removed. In my opinion, this greatly increases the risk of negligent discharge. Here is a method I've discovered. With the action open and the next cartridge on the lifter, slowly close the action just enough to release the cartridge from the feed lips. Then open the action again, and the weapon can then be rolled over and the cartridge should fall out without being chambered. With the loading area clear, the action may then be fully closed to release the next cartridge from the magazine, and the process is repeated. This method is much slower than that recommended in the owner's manuals, but in my opinion is much safer. When closing the action, keep the trigger finger clear, not only to prevent negligent discharge, but also to avoid injury as the lever is closed. When all ammunition has been removed, Leave the action open so it can be seen to be empty. For range safety, insert an open bolt indicator. For storage, after double checking that all ammunition has been removed from the weapon, close the action and lower the hammer in a controlled manner. To safely lower the hammer, always keep the weapon pointed in a safe direction. First, restrain the hammer, then press the trigger and ease the hammer forward. As soon as the hammer begins to move, release the trigger. 
on original style models, the hammer should stop at the half cock position, which will also block the trigger. Later models with external safeties may not have this position. This may also apply to different brands. Now let's see how to load and fire a weapon of this type. These are Azum snap caps, solid aluminum inert dummy rounds. They're expensive, but are perfect for most forms of dry practice and function testing. They're advertised as being available for over 100 cartridges. They can be found at your local sporting goods store or ordered from the internet. This is the loading gate, first introduced on the Winchester model of 1866. The action must be closed for the gate to operate. With the action closed, cartridges are pushed into the gate until they catch. Depending on tolerances, spring pressure, and the cartridge being used, pinching may occur when loading. So, do watch your fingers. Magazine spring resistance will increase as more cartridges are added, and a slip may result in a cartridge being forcibly ejected. Some rifles will allow the cartridge to rest when it is part way into the loading gate. This allows you to add another without fighting resistance from the previous cartridge. This rifle pretty much doesn't allow one to do that. Possibly altering or replacing the loading gate will improve this. Some loading gates are designed with a step for that purpose. Magazine capacity will vary with the cartridge being used and the length of the magazine tube, which may not match the length of the barrel. This standard 20 inch carbine in 3030 Winchester has a magazine capacity of seven rounds. When the magazine is full, cycle the action completely to chamber the first round. The weapon is now ready to fire. To fire, aim, ensure the manual safety, if present, has been released, ensure the lever is fully closed to disengage the trigger stop, and press the trigger in the usual way. The Winchester Model 1894 and comparable rifles are manually operated. The action must be cycled for each shot. This 1977 model has positive ejection with a plunger in the bolt face, so it is not strictly necessary to vigorously work the action to ensure positive ejection. However, it is a good principle to always vigorously work the action of any manually operated repeater. You will also notice it is not necessary to remove the weapon from your shoulder to cycle the action. The loading gate on the side of the receiver allows cartridges to be added at any time, so the shooter may top off whenever he wishes. The weapon does not need to be completely empty to be reloaded. If the weapon is completely empty and a quick shot is needed, one cartridge may be dropped into the loading area on this top eject Winchester model, and the action may be closed. Depending on your exact model and brand, simply dropping a cartridge into the loading area may cause a misfeed. You may have to guide the cartridge into the chamber. The side ejecting Marlin models have much less clearance, and you should use dummy cartridges to practice your loading technique. For carry in the field or storage ready for use, carefully lower the hammer to the half cock position, as previously described and or engage the manual safety if present. Never lower the hammer all the way on a live cartridge. This will result in the firing pin resting directly on the primer, greatly increasing the risk of negligent discharge. Always use the half cock position and or the manual safety as the owner's manual instructs. To fire from this condition, aim, release the manual safety if present, bring the hammer to full cock, and fire in the usual way. This should conclude the basic operation of the Winchester Model 1894 and many comparable lever-action rifle models. 
If you have any questions, please leave them in comments. And if you found this video useful, please consider a charitable donation through my website's PayPal button. Thank you.